is Twitch a competition? This has always been a fascinating conversation uh, that I have with myself in the bathroom, on the toilet. You can have some interesting conversations with yourself and you can see your own genitals, but that's besides the point. So this is actually, this has come up on TikTok more than once. There has been plenty of creators that have uh, that have made TikTok saying Twitch uh, is not a race, Twitch is not a competition, your fellow streamers aren't your competition. And every time I see that, I say, I could not disagree more. And so the most recent time that this came up was from a guy on TikTok named I am Pastor Gaines. He's actually a really, really good TikToker. Um, I like the conversations that he starts on, on TikTok, and there's always uh, a really good combo happening in the comments. But for this particular topic, this is something that I've wanted to, to talk about for a long time. And now that I'm doing these talking head videos for YouTube, I'm like, you know what? This would be a fantastic topic to talk about. And so now we're here. I also needed an, uh, a reason to try out Adobe Audition for the first time. I had been using Audacity on, you know, on my computer forever. You know, it's lightweight, it's it's clean, it's fast. Uh, but I thought, you know, Audacity doesn't run too good on the M1 Max, so I figured I'd give it a shot. So, so the, the question is Twitch a competition? My answer is yes, and and more importantly, are other streamers your competition? Yes, but also it depends. If you are a quiet, reserved streamer who only plays indie games uh, and you stream like four times a week. Is Dr. Disrespect your competition? No. Are one of your friends who strictly plays Overwatch for 14 hours a day every single day, is he your competition? No. Is somebody who is in your category your competition? Kind of. Kind of. There's only so many viewers to watch. And if you niche yourself down enough, you're going to find that the other people that are in your niche uh, are directly competing for the viewers that you have. Now, that's not to say that your competition is your enemy. That That's the last thing that I'm saying. What I'm saying is that when, it, when you break it down logically, there are only so many viewers to watch certain types of games. And when it comes down to niching your content into a certain category, you know, some have, you know, way less viewers than other ones do. So do I consider one of my best friends, middle-aged stream, do I consider him competition? Not really. We do two completely different types of content. I focus on just chatting and technology, and he does mostly retro gaming, but some, some other gaming. Our, our content is completely different. I'm never competing against him. Do I feel like I compete against other technology creators in this space? Absolutely. One of the things that I brought up in, in my comments on the TikTok was if you want to be the best, you have to beat the best. And that is unfortunately a quote from a movie, like a street fighting movie, but never back down, beat down. It's, 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 it has the bad guy, the bad guy who killed Marissa in the OC. Spoiler alert. I can't remember that guy's name. I can't, I can't remember that guy's name. But anyways, so I'll kind of I'll kind of start this out by reading you exactly what I said. So here's the original. Your competition is not other streamers. Your competition is who you were last stream. So a great anecdote at its core. Um, but my response was, you'd be surprised what you can achieve if you treat other streamers as competition. You got to beat the best to be the best. A little shout out from the quote right there. Um, and and in, in response, you said, if you are innovating and changing the game, then it doesn't matter what others are doing, right? Uh, so what I said to that was, who do you think is going to have more drive to innovate? The complacent one who thinks that there is enough room at the top for everyone or the one who realizes that others, like people in your category or have the same content, are your friendly competition and strives to top them every single day. So you'll, uh, you know, if you listen to a lot of big streamers, you'll hear stories like the one I'm about to tell you. When Ninja was getting pretty big playing H1Z1, um, he noticed that there was somebody else who was streaming earlier than him and getting the majority of the viewers for H1Z1. So what he would do is he would wake up at 3 a.m., which was like hours before this other person got on and start streaming the same game just to captivate that audience. Now, does that make you a direct enemy of that person that you're competing with? No, absolutely not. But it's that drive, that mentality of like, I need to be the best that really slingshotted him forward in that category. And then most likely had a, a massive, massive play in his success today. I 
guarantee, but motherfuckers getting notifications. I guarantee when you look at Tim, Ninja, Dr. Lupo, Nick Merckx, I guarantee that they don't all look at each other as friends. They 100% look at each other and go, I need to be better. And again, it's not like, it's not a mean thing. It's not being, uh, it's not being so competitive that you're like throwing your friendships under the bus. Now, while that does happen, right? While the fame, the fortune goes to people's heads, you have to think like, I wonder, I wonder how they go about competing on the back end for that type of stuff. Cause when they're all creating content together, they all need to have clips and they're all putting them on the same social media platforms. They're all playing the same games. Uh, the, the same events that's happening on one person's stream is also happening in another person's stream. And you know that they're battling to get it out first. I guarantee most of them don't take it personally. They know that it's business. You have to know that this is business. In my opinion, nothing good comes out of the mindset of everybody love everybody. There's enough room for us all to succeed. No. You want to know the people that succeed? The people that sacrifice. The people that put everything that they have into content creation. The people that just like live and breathe every aspect of this industry. They soak it all up. They learn. They execute. Go, go, go. Again, this isn't about grinding, right? This is just about like the dedication to growing and the dedication to perfecting that craft. Those are the people that are going to succeed, right? And of course, you have like these off chances where somebody just happened to play Overwatch, Overwatch for a certain amount of time and they, they're blown up and they're huge now, right? Like, of, of course, there's exceptions. But for the majority of people, completely different story. You have to be able to look at other people, other streamers, other content creators and take what they're doing and say, I can do that. I can do it better. and I'm going to do it my way. You, you have to have that mentality. If you become complacent in this in this bubble of like, oh, all these other people, they're just other streamers. I don't need to worry about what they're doing. Part of being a content creator is constantly watching about constantly watching what is going on around you. What are other people doing? What are they saying? What are their actions? What story do their actions tell? How are they executing different things on different platforms? You constantly, constantly have to pay attention to what's going on around you. This is such a massive reason why I do a podcast myself, because I want to take time out of my day to analyze our industry, talk about the things that are big, talk about the drama, whatever. It's just to keep keep like focused on what is happening so that I can follow along accordingly. If you're just in your own little world and you're doing your own little thing and you're not paying attention to what's going on around you, you're probably going to get left behind. And that's kind of how I see it. It doesn't have to be a negative, right? Think about what do we always say? Competition is the greatest thing for the consumer. That still holds true here as well. Do you think that any of your friends would turn down an opportunity in their own content creation career in the name of friendship? The answer is probably no. Everybody is working towards the same goal, and that is to grow as a content creator. So it's not, I'm not saying that you need to throw your friendships under the bus, right? I'm not saying that you need to like fight tooth and nail to get to the top and leave everybody in the dust. I'm just saying that you need to be aware that this is 110% a competition. You may not be directly competing with people that are not in your category, but for the people that are creating the same type of content you are, 100%. Now, that's not to say that you can't have a lovely piece of the pie, right? If, if, if there's a massive, massive pie, you can still have your pie and be happy with whatever you want. But for the people that are hungry and they want the whole damn thing, competition's where it's at. And in, in my opinion, when it comes to like personal growth and, and building skills and gaining knowledge, you have to have that desire to go out and want to be better. You have to go out, analyze the things that you love, uh, you know, focus on things that you want, you know, inherit those things and, and build on them and just go, 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 go. And you're just like this snowball effect of momentum of the things that you learn and your experiences and your perspective. And it's just like, it's how you, it's how you start your propelling force to move forward. And I, I think it's incredibly important. So that's kind of where I'm, that's where I'm sitting at. I would love to open the discussion to anybody who's willing to give me their insight, right? Do you see Twitch as a competition? Do you see content creation as a competition? Do you, are you somebody who creates the same type of content 
um, that your people that you look up to? Do you create the same types of content uh, of, of your friends that you have in your friend group? Do you see it that way? Because I, I definitely see it that way. And I'm not going to let it get to the point where I want it to get in between me and my friends. But, you know, I, I, I tell the same people that I work with, look, I like, I like working here with you. I like being your colleague, but I'm, I'm here to fucking work. I'm here to do my goddamn job and I'm here to go home. That is how I see content creation. That is how I see building a side thing um, in content creation, right? I'm, I am taking it that seriously because um, I think it deserves the seriousness, you know? So I think without rambling on too much longer, again, let me know what you think. I would love to hear your perspective, whether you, whether you think this is a competition or not, um, where you draw the line as, as your own streamer, as your own content creator. So, um, Thanks for checking in on the video. I appreciate you stopping by and saying hello. And I uh, hope you have a great day. I'll talk to you soon. Goodbye. I'm not going to drop the mic. Are you kidding me? This thing was like $20. Also, let me know what you think about the audio quality. I'm just kind of messing around. I got the Shure SM58 plugged into my dbx 2 Success, which goes into my Focusrite. And I just thought, like, I really wanted to do videos where I was a little bit more free and not tied to a microphone on a desk. I wanted to express myself. And uh, I love the way that this microphone sounds. And it's a rejection is fantastic. With all this equipment that I have in here, it's, it sounds great. There's probably a lot of plosives. Um, but hey, that's, uh, that's what it takes to be the best. <laughs> uh, it's nowhere near the best. My audio is uh, quite subpar. All right, see you later.